Welcome to Module 1, Machine Setup, in a series of videos for hard banding solutions by Postal Industries. In this video, you will learn how to set up a hard banding machine for the application of DuraBand or TuffBand. We are using a hard banding machine manufactured by Coffee Manufacturing, so keep in mind that the parameters necessary for proper application will be the same for any brand of hard banding machines, but adjustments may not need to be done in the same exact manner as shown. We can help you on your specific machine upon request. Let's get started. This is the Hard Banding Solutions Application Guide, which should be used for all settings. The guide includes a range of parameters in red and the recommended settings in black. The majority of DuraBand and TuffBand applications are run in reverse polarity, more commonly referred to as electrode positive. There are a few applications for DuraBand that require straight polarity or electrode negative, so it's important that you know how to change polarity. Before switching cables, be sure that the welding unit is off. For extra insurance, we recommend shutting off the main breaker. Simply remove the nuts from each cable and reattach cables as required, either electrode positive, used for most applications, or electrode negative. Replace cables and secure nuts. An amperage gauge can be found on the control panels of most hard banding machines. If there is no gauge on the panel, amperage can be monitored on the welding unit itself. Amperage can be adjusted in two ways. Some hard banding machines come equipped with an amperage dial. While most machines, the amperage is adjusted with wire feed speed. In our case, we use the wire feed speed dial to adjust amps. More speed will increase amps. Less speed decreases amps. Amperage also will change with torch height. So, if adjustments are made to the torch height during the application operation, you may need to adjust your wire feed speed. A voltage meter can be found on the control panels of most hard banding machines. If there is no gauge on the control panel, voltages can be monitored on the welding unit itself. Voltage is directly related to heat and wire transfer. Higher voltages impart more heat into the part and make the puddle more fluid, which can make puddle control more difficult. Lower voltages will make the puddle cooler and it will solidify more quickly. Reducing voltage below 29, in the case of DuraBand or TuffBand, will change the transfer characteristics of the wire and should never be done. The application of DuraBand or TuffBand requires a high percentage of argon gas mix for ideal results. We recommend 98% argon, 2% oxygen, but 95% argon, 5% oxygen, or 100% argon will work fine. Contact Postal or a tech center before using other gas mixes. We recommend a gas flow of 35 cubic feet per hour, CFH, or 16.5 liters per minute LPM with a three quarter inch nozzle. Increase gas flow when using a larger nozzle or in windy conditions in order to produce a proper gas shield. Note that when changing from one gas to another, such as changing from 98% argon, 2% oxygen to 100% argon, slight adjustments may be required in amperages and voltages and perhaps slight changes in other settings like oscillation, etc. We do not recommend the use of 100% carbon dioxide or 75% argon, 25% carbon dioxide. Take special precautions when loading a spool of wire. Safety glasses must always be worn because loose wire can cause serious eye injuries. Install the spool on the spindle with the wire feeding from the bottom. Do not remove the end of the wire from the spool until it's secured on the spindle. Disengage the wire feed assembly by pulling the knob straight back and lifting. With the spool secured and wire feed assembly open, remove the wire from the side of the spool and cut the end to get a straight edge. Always keep one hand on the spool to prevent the wire from unraveling. Thread the wire through the plastic grommet, through the rollers, and through the grommet on the other side of the rollers. Close the wire feed assembly. Using the wire feed switch on the control panel, continue to thread to the torch. Adjust tension and straightener as needed. The straightener is used to compensate for natural bend in wire as it comes off of the spool. We recommend a water-cooled torch. Before welding, be sure that your water cooling pump is on to avoid burning up your torch. Torch angle and offset are imperative for the proper application of hard banding alloys. These adjustments are crucial to puddle control and can be the difference between success and failure of hard band application. Too far back on the tool joints will result in bands that are too high and humped, while too far up will cause the puddle to roll off the front of the pipe. 
This may be the opposite for machines that rotate counterclockwise. Using a protractor, find a flat area on the torch assembly and measure the torch angle. It should be between 10 to 17 degrees. Using a straight edge or machinist rule, line up the center of the tool joint. Using a second rule or hard banding gauge, measure from the center of the tool joint to the wire. This is your offset. It should measure between 3 quarter and 1 and a half inches. The stick out is the measurement from the torch tip to the tool joint surface. Typically, the torch tip is recessed 1 16th to 1 8 inch in the nozzle, but measuring from the nozzle is very simple and acceptable. Using the stair step end of a possible hard banding gauge as a guide, measure the distance from the nozzle to the surface of the tool joint. You can also use a machinist rule. It should measure between 3 quarter and 1 and 1 8 inch. Most applications will require oscillation of the torch. Oscillation is the left to right movement of the torch and it determines the finished width of the hard bands. To measure oscillation, place a hard banding gauge or machinist rule flat on the tool joint. Reduce your oscillation speed by turning the oscillation speed knob to the left. With the oscillation turned down, measure the distance the torch travels from left to right. Make width adjustments by loosening the screw on the oscillation cam and sliding away from the center to widen the band or toward the center to narrow the band. It should measure between 3 quarter and 1 and 1 quarter inches. Oscillation speed is determined by counting the number of complete oscillations in a minute. A complete oscillation is a full back and forth cycle of the torch. Using a stopwatch, count the number of complete oscillations in one minute. The recommended speed is between 60 to 100 complete oscillations per minute. Make adjustments using the oscillation speed knob. Chuck rotation speed also plays a very important role in the final band width and height. Rotation speed determines how long the torch will be over a particular area. Slow rotation will result in the band being too high and will exceed the recommended 1 8 inch maximum band height. If the rotation is too fast, the bands will be thin and not meet the required 3 32nd inch minimum band height. Rotation speed also controls the amount of heat being generated when welding. Rotation directly relates to finished or interpass temperature. We use 2 minutes for a 5 inch tool joint as a benchmark. Smaller ODs will require faster rotation and larger ODs slower rotation times. Step over speed is the amount of time the torch moves or indexes at the end of each band. If manual step over is used, this is not necessary. To adjust step over speed, use a tape rule and stretch tape across the welding box. Start your torch online on the tape. Measure the distance the torch travels as it indexes. Make speed adjustments as necessary with a step over adjustment knob and repeat to measure. Your step over will determine the amount of band overlap and tie in you will have when bands are complete. You want approximately 1 8 overlap for a good tie in to the previous band. To get this, the typical step over is 1 and 1 16th inch. Your hard banding machine is now set up and ready for the application of DuraBand or TuffBand. Though all parameters are set correctly at this point, it is highly recommended that parameters are checked frequently during the application process.